today we're going to explore another fantastic reaction. This one involves hydrogen and we're going to run the reaction with a familiar one that we've done before. This one involves again the use of hydrochloric acid which is HCl, hydrogen and chlorine, and the solid zinc where it produces zinc chloride and diatomic hydrogen. I call it diatomic because it takes two atoms of hydrogen to make diatomic hydrogen and you can see the subscript of two which represents the diatomic hydrogen. Now, the only thing that we notice about this reaction right away is it's not balanced, and we'll show you what to, how to do that at the very end. But let's go ahead and run the reaction. We're going to collect some hydrogen gas, and to do that, we already have in this Florence flask some zinc, and then we're going to add the hydrochloric acid by taking the glass stopper off the re reagent bottle, pouring that on into the, 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 to the zinc. The reaction begins running. collecting the gas inside the balloon. It's an exothermic reaction, so it gets a lot warmer. That's filling up very nicely. Plenty of hydrogen gas in there. You can also notice the reaction behind me is a, sin is a single replacement reaction. One element is replacing the other, changing hydrochloric acid from uh, from its state into zinc chloride, where zinc has replaced the hydrogen, and hydrogen is all by itself as a diatomic atom, or diatomic molecule. We have plenty of hydrogen in here, and I'm gonna move Florence flask out of the way. And here we go, our balloon of hydrogen gas. I let go of it. Whoa, it goes up. Why does it go up? because it's the lightest gas in the universe, lighter than helium. And actually, this is a great demonstration as to why you might, want, might not want to have hydrogen in your birthday balloons. Or maybe you would. Hmm, let's see why. So the first thing we do is we take this tape and attach this balloon to the end of this meter stick. And I will have my trusty assistant, Hannah, take the balloon and extend it out, full arms reach away from her. A little higher, that's good. Now I have a match here that I will light. Light a match to the end here on this meter stick. Let's go ahead and let that burn a little bit more. Get that match going. Come on, match. There you go. Let up a tiny bit. And amazing. Incredible shockwave and a loud boom. Wasn't that incredible? All right, so let's go ahead and describe a little bit about what happened there. Thank you, Hannah. That was very good of you. <laughs> OK. And we're going to go ahead and discuss a little bit about what happened here. All right, first off, we've produced our diatomic hydrogen, but we need to balance this equation because it's not balanced yet. And, um, and that was the gas that we ended up using and producing there. So it looks like we have two hydrogens here, but we're missing some. So we'll draw a little line here, and we'll take a look at what elements we're working with. So it looks like on this side we have hydrogen, and we have chlorine, and we have zinc. And then we'll move to the, the product side of the reaction, where again we'll have hydrogen, and we have chlorine, and we have... Oh, and we have zinc. And then we're going to see how many we have as a, as a product here. It looks like we end up having two hydrogens. And so we'll mark down that we have already, already have two. And on this side, looks like we need to balance it out. We need two. So we'll add what's called a coefficient. That's the big number. You can never add subscripts. You add subscripts, you end up changing what the substance actually is. So now we have two hydrogens, and that's balanced with the two hydrogens on this side. But now, because we've done that, we use distributive properties, and we make, and that means that now we have two chlorines. So we'll put two chlorines here. On this side, we have one chlorine, so we'll need to add another coefficient of two. Now, using distributive properties, we have two chlorines, and we've created two zinc. So now we have two zinc here, and right here we're allowed a coefficient of two, and now we have a grand total of two hydrogen, two chlorine, and two zinc on both sides of that equation. Now, what actually happened when that hydrogen 
the, we'll call our hydrogen bomb exploded. So we'll clear off the screen and we'll start that out. We, we ended up with diatomic hydrogen. Oxygen also exists as a diatomic molecule. And we'll go ahead and we'll write down our yield or produce or gives sign. And we'll show what ends up being produced. Well, we ended up producing, whoa. We ended up producing water, but then that's not a balanced equation either. So we write down here that we began with two hydrogens and two oxygens. On this side, it doesn't show that we have two, but we know we began with two oxygens. So to make sure that's the case, we put a coefficient of two, which means now, because two times two, it means now we have four hydrogens and distributive properties again, two oxygen. So now we have two oxygen. Go back to this side. Huh, looks like we had four hydrogen on that side. Well, we need to increase this number. So we add a coefficient of two. Now two times two makes us have four hydrogen. And how many oxygen do we have? Well, it looks like we already have two. So now we have two, four hydrogen, two oxygen, four hydrogen, two oxygen, and a balanced equation. And as a product of this reaction, we ended up with two molecules of water. So this reaction was an exothermic reaction, created a lot of heat. It's also called deflagration, which is that flame, explode rapidly uh, um, burning flame during the ignition or combustion of that hydrogen gas. And we could definitely feel that shockwave, couldn't we? Yeah. And it was loud. So that's that reaction for you. Hope you had a good time watching that. If you have any questions, you know where to contact me, Parsons Junior High School.